Hello all, welcome back to Shave with Peg Leg. Appreciate you all being here. Sorry. I keep moving my hand around down here. I'm going to knock my cup over. I, kept, I hit it twice. I brushed it twice. I was afraid I was going to knock it over. Alright, um, doing face shave today. With the Sen Skin Rose Gold Safety Raver. Came in that box. Came with a nice pink polishing cloth. A tuck of five super platinum blades magical which is loaded one is loaded into this razor is a beautiful razor to me I love the look of it it's marketed as a woman's razor but that look appeals to me I think it looks well and I have soaked this thing in vinegar water and well and actually ran straight vinegar through it put it down in a thing of vinegar and pumped it. It's still plugged up. I don't think it's plugged up with hard water. I think it's just something went wrong with it. So we're probably going to get a new one of those using the cube. Pre-shave. Uh, how's it been going guys? Don't forget, got the giveaway coming up. The drawing on Monday, 7 p.m. So get in on that. Yes, get in on that one. Today's soap. The Talent Soap Factory. Fantasy Donut. It's nighttime here. I've already had my dinner, so it's time for dessert. And we're having a donut for dessert. I've got the splash and the EDP. Going to bed tonight smell like a donut. Got it lathered up in my bowl. In my 20 millimeter Parker. I just need to bring in a cup of coffee with this. That's all it needs is a cup of coffee. Oh, the scent is wonderful. Okay. Are you guys following? It's Sterling September. You're supposed to use Sterling soaps with all your shaves in September. Well, I will do two ster Sterling shaves this month because I only have two Sterling soaps. I have their Barbershop and their Mountain Man. I had to check. I couldn't remember the name of it. That's the only two I have right now, as of now. So, I don't really get to be following. I'm not really going to be following Sterling Month, and I'm not going to be following Single Edge Month because the only single edge I have is the one blade. And I think the reason they call it the one blade is because that's all their blades are good for is one use, and then they're trash. Okay, let's see how this magical blade is. Super Platinum and the Sun Skin. This thing's got a decent weight to it. I haven't taken measurements on it. I will after the shave. No, I forgot to soap. Yeah, I forgot to put soap in that area. Sue me. There we go. Did it on that side. The blade's not that bad. Well, 
to me it's at least better than a strange lid or a Rockwell blade. Actually, for a blade made in China that I've never heard of, and I've only ever seen sold with this razor, like I said, I've never heard of them before. Initial use, first pass, I put it up there with a Gillette Platinum. Seriously, I would. Just because it comes from China doesn't mean it's crap, guys. They do make good stuff. I mean, they make a lot of stuff for other manufacturers around, or other companies that are based around the world. Excuse me, I keep sliding out of this damn chair. They do make stuff for other companies based on the other companies' specifications. Just, it's made with cheap labor. And not always cheap materials because sometimes companies say it needs to be made with this to these specs and that's how they make it not bad not bad at all actually but that scent oh my god I smell like a donut I smell sweet and luscious sweet and tasty that's me Okay, September 2nd, 1666, do you know what happened? Over the next three days, starting just after midnight on September 2nd, very beginning of September 2nd, early hours of it, the city of London started to burn, and it went on for three days. Started, the fire started in a bakery. You'll have to forgive me. I need, I need to check notes. There's a lot, a lot of information in this one. And my Swiss cheese brain will not hold it all. It started on Pudding Lane in Thomas Ferriner's Bakery. Um... His family had to escape out, they lived above the bakery, they had to escape out the second story window onto the roof of the neighboring house. And the neighbors were helping him try to put the fire out before their place caught on fire. And they were not successful. You gotta remember back then, fighting fires was a long line of people between the nearest water source, whether that be a river, a lake, a stream, a well, and all toting buckets. Well, actually two lines of people. Full bucket went towards the fire and either they had somebody running the empty buckets back to the beginning of the line, or they just had another line where people were passing the empty buckets back to rebuild, refill, and pass them back up to be thrown on the flames. So anyways, the fire started burning out of control and started catching other buildings on fire. So they called the mayor of London at the time. Lord Mayor Sir Thomas Bloodworth, a typical politician, who was appointed to the position because he was a yes man, not because he was a man of action. And this will become apparent. Now when he arrived to the fire, the fire was consuming the bakery and the nearby houses around it. And one of the typical ways to fight a fire back then was to tear down houses around the fire to take away their fuel source to keep it from spreading. 
to create a fire break. And good old Lord Mayor Sir Thomas Bloodworth wouldn't authorize the tearing down of the houses around and this is a badger brush I can tell it's scrunchy it's scratchy it's not completely broken in yet but it's okay I don't mind I like the scratchy feeling on my face he wouldn't authorize the tearing down of the houses because they were rental units and he didn't and the owners were not there to give him their permission to tear down the houses now mind you he's the Lord Mayor of London He's supposed to save the city of London in this situation, but he wants permission of the landlords, the property owners, to tear down their property to save the city. So anyways, nothing got torn down. So the fire raged all day Sunday and into Sunday night. And into Monday. And during Monday, the people trying to fight the fire, which they were using city guard to help fight the fire, of course, the men of the city guard to help fight the fire. They couldn't get to the fires where they were springing up because as you guys know if you build an open fire embers fly up off, off the fire and they go with the wind well they were starting to float yards away and landing in thatched roofs and wooden gutters and catching other buildings on fire so the fire was starting to spread quickly but the firefighters couldn't get to the buildings because the people in that area were panicking and they had all their carts and their belongings dragging them down the street the carts filled with their house and their belongings and everything dragging them down the street and they were clogging the streets and the firefighters couldn't fight the humanity coming away from the flames to get to the flames to fight it oh at this point only one person has died from the fire and that was the maid of the bakery the people that owned the bakery they had to jump from their house to the neck the roof their second story window to the roof of the next house and she was afraid to do so so she burned to, because she was afraid to jump she burned the death in the bakery fire the original fire Not a bad blade, guys. I'm going to do a little touch-up. This razor shade is pretty good, too. I don't need that much there. Actually, I could get by on residual slickness, but... So, anyways. Fire burned all day Sunday, Sunday night, all day Monday, Monday night. And in the wee hours of Tuesday morning, the winds picked up and started blowing through the city. And what happens when you add wind to flames? They get bigger, they get bolder, and they start getting carried by the wind. And those embers start flying a little farther away. So on Tuesday, oh wait, I'm sorry, on Monday night, on Monday night, the Lord Mayor was called out again to look at the flames. So they, he left his house, he came out and looked at the fire, and he dismissed it. He said, Pfft. he said that is so small, a woman could piss on it and put it out. And he went home to go back to bed. Tuesday morning, they went to go get the Lord Mayor again to come look at the fire. He was nowhere to be found. He had fled the city in the middle of the night. Such a brave man. But because he had not decided to tear down any buildings, on Monday, King Charles II surveyed what was going on with the damage, and he put his brother, 
the Duke of York in charge of the fire brigade. And the Duke of York was using the soldiers from the castle, from uh, Whitehall Castle and everything, and the city guard to fight the fire, of course. He was using all those to fight the fire. And um, since fires were breaking out farther away from the main fire, like quite a ways away, people were saying it was terrorists. And England at the time was the Anglo-Dutch or Ang Anglo-Dutch or Anglo-French war. They were fighting the Dutch and the French at the same time in a war. And people were saying the Dutch and the French were starting fires in London. The, some of the immigrants in the city. So violence started breaking out in the streets with Dutch and French people getting beat up. So the guard was distracted from their firefighting duties trying to break up these mini riots of people getting beaten for no reason and they couldn't fight the fires. It was just a big confused freaking mess. I need just a little more touch up on the neck. My neck's always bad, you know that. So, just a little more on the neck. So, anyways. Oh, and to rent a cart a week before the fire, to rent, to rent a cart to, you know, they had the carts with the wheels and the long handles so that you could push the cart and with hay or whatever your stuff was. Cost two pence to rent for a week prior to the fire. The night of, by Monday, when the fire was really starting to get going, it cost 40 pounds to rent the cart for a day. Which I think they said the, that was the equivalent of like 122,000 pounds in, in 2021 money for one day. So you could get your stuff out. And rich people, when their quarter, when their quadrant of the city was threatened with fire and things started burning, were hiring poor people as porters to help get their belongings out of their house. Most of that stuff disappeared because the porters took the money that they were being paid to carry items out of the house and they also took the items out of the house and disappeared with them. Like I said guys, it was just, it was just a big chaotic mess. In the guards in the Tower of London On Tuesday night, as the flames started getting close to the to to the Tower of London, which had gunpowder storage, and they didn't want it to burn. Oh, St. Paul's Cathedral was also burned out. Well, the, the London Gazette put out their last issue just before their place of business, their building, burned down. And all the printing papers and library books and printing equipment and stuff was brought to St. Paul's Cathedral because they thought that the stone walls of the church would protect it and some of the stuff was put in out, outside storage buildings and the buildings were filled with books and paper and all kinds of stuff and sparks landed in that area and woof St. Paul's Cathedral went goodbye because all that paper and everything was stuffed in the outside buildings and inside the church and it all caught fire and poof, churches went up like a tinderbox. And there was people hiding inside too. They escaped. Only six people died in three days of fire, which was, it's been debated by modern day historians, but at the time they said only six people died. That's good shape. That's a real good shape. Chinese indigenous razor head. It's a DE-89 copy made in China. That's all that is. Gave a damn good shave. Real good shave. I'm happy with that.
but on Tuesday morning, early Tuesday morning, the winds, like I said, the winds picked up, and they started, and all the buildings were so close together, you could, they, you could almost hear your neighbor across the alleyway fart in his living room, whatever, because the buildings are so close together, you could reach out your window and shake hands with the guy across the alley, practically. That's, that's how close the buildings were. And when you've got winds coming and they're tunneled down something that narrow, they pick up force. They pick up speed. So we're going to wash the face. Plus this. So all, all the fire and embers and everything really started getting scattered across the city. With the winds doing that and all. just It, it was just a chaotic, horrible mess. God, that is a great scent. If you guys like glazed donuts, and who doesn't like donuts? I know, my forehead is oily as bark. Soap won't stick to it. There we go. That's good. I'm going to let that sit in for a second. You can look at my white face. But there was just so much going on. People people in the countryside could see the flames. And they were coming into town with their carts. And they were coming in town up the river, Thames, with their boats to ferry people out. And charging outrageous prices to get people out. At one point, the commandants at the gates of the city closed and locked the gates to keep people from fleeing the city. Making them, trying to force them to stay and fight the flames. So there was chaos there. Lots of fights breaking out. People trying to force the gates open and shit. There was just chaos everywhere. People were freaking panicked and, and trying to flee a massive incinerator. And the gates were locked. They couldn't get out. It's kind of like the Titanic where they locked all the third class passengers below decks. And they, they had the gates and they locked them all. So they couldn't get out. Because only first class passengers could use the lifeboats. So yeah, the, the embers were traveling, at this point when the winds picked up, the embers weren't just traveling a few yards away, they were traveling hundreds of yards away and catching thatched roofs, wooden gutters, wooden buildings on fire. All these hot embers were traveling a couple hundred yards maybe and with, these, with these winds and there was such a vacuum on the ground that people trying to fight the fire in these areas couldn't breathe because you get that fire tornado going and it just sucks all the air out of the out of the place and you, you can't breathe. The, the fire is consuming all the oxygen coming in and there's none left for you. Allen Block. I got a half a point out the face. About a point and a half on my neck. Right here where I went over it like four times, five times, whatever. But not that bad. It's not bad at all. So yeah, I mean, so only six people died in this three-day fire. But the whole this whole story is you can look it up on Wikipedia, the uh, the Great London Fire or the London Fire of 1866. Um, they had had another one in 1833. But this one was worse. They say that over 10,000 buildings burned down. But anyways, get back to Tuesday night. The guards at the Tower of London, where all the gunpowder was stored. And the flames were approaching the Tower of London. The guards, on their own, without anybody else's help, decided to take the gunpowder and go out and blow a fire break. And they started blowing up buildings between them and the fire to limit its fuel source to keep walking towards them. So they went out and they blew up everything. And that's what helped put the fire out because it lost fuel. 
they were not lucky like DC was when the hurricane blew through and blew out all the flames of British lit in Washington DC a couple of year, hundred years later or 150 years later thereabouts which is but yeah that, that was horrific, horrific horrific damage Okay, I can't get any aftershave to come out. Finally did. Oh god. Oh guys. That is a great scent. Just remind me next time I use it, I gotta bring a cup of coffee in with me. Maybe a men cream. Or a bomb, just that much, that's all you need. Now we're going to top it off. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, the Great Fire of London, 1666. Just a total shit show, really. I mean, people trying to flee. Couldn't, firemen couldn't get in to fight the fires because there were so many people in the streets. The Lord Mayor being a total dick, just saying, oh, a woman could piss on this and put it out. And then going home to go to bed, and he didn't actually go home to go to bed. He fled the city. Um, I didn't read anything more about him. I don't know if they ever found him. you got to remember back then, there's no picture IDs or anything. You could just go to another town, another city, and say, over here you were Joe Smith. Now you can come over here and say you're... Bob Williams and you're from, instead of being from London, now you're from Bristol. I mean, nobody knew. Right? So he could have done that. I don't know. I haven't read, I haven't read any more about him. It was just a total, total chaos. And the Bridge of London crossing the Thames, um, they were worried that the fires were going to leap onto it like it did in 1833 and cross the river to the other side of the city and burn it. 80% of London burned and over 10,000 buildings burned down. And then, of course, the guards of the, of the Tower of London destroyed a few, quite a few more, but they had to put the fire out somehow, and that's how they stopped the spread of it. Just a crazy, crazy mess. They did not have the gear we have today. All right, guys, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Don't forget the affiliate link. A couple of you guys have used it recently. I appreciate that. I will be doing another giveaway with that very, very shortly, next day or two. I'll be putting up a giveaway for that. Actually, why don't we wait until after I do my drawing on Monday for that, and I'll put up another video for another giveaway for that gift card afterwards. How about that? That'll work. Instead of running two at the same time, it gets confusing. All right, guys, I appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate all the new subscribers. Love you all from here. I appreciate you being here. I really do. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more stupid stories. It's crazy. Go go on Wikipedia and read about it. It's, it's just a crazy, crazy thing. All right, guys, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Talent Soap Factory. Awesome scent. Awesome. So this stuff blows up, lathers very well, super slick. And the Senskin razor, I wanted this, like I said, for like four months, and it was it was sold out. And it finally came back in stock. And as soon as it did, I bought one. It was $22 and change. I think it's a beautiful razor. I think the women always get marketed with the most beautiful razors, and we always get the, the more manly-looking ones. But I just like the looks of this razor, and that's the reason I got it. I knew what it was before I ordered it. It is what it was. It is what I thought it was, but it's still just a beautiful razor, and it shaves very well. Like I said, if I'm not bleeding, I'm not shaving. I guess I didn't shave because I'm not bleeding. All right, guys. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Enough of the babbling fat guy in the camera. You're in the chair next. Happy shaves out there.